Hello painters, it's Debbie from acrylicpouring.com back today with a black canvas because I want to do a negative dirty pour today. So you might remember this painting that I did. This was um, a just a, an isolated, really bright and metallic swipe against uh, a dark background. And I really like this. I think um, it kind of appeals to me. It has the straight lines that I like so much in art. It looks kind of neat and organized, but at the same time, it's got all the fabulous metallic details and cells that I love about acrylic pouring too. So I'm going to try and do something similar today but instead of doing a swipe I'm going to do a dirty pour and I want to do it right across the center of my canvas here. So I've painted the canvas black in advance and I'm also planning to use black for my negative space and I'll do that wet <clears throat> but I'm going to create um, a metallic area down the center here. So for my paints, I've got a couple of Liquitex Basics. This one is the bronze and this is the copper. Then I've also got this one, which is one of my favorite paints of all time. This is the Martha Stewart Glitter Craft Paints. And this one is Fire Opal. But for some reason, you can't seem to find Fire Opal for love or money. I don't know, <clears throat> excuse me, if that's because I've been telling everyone to go and buy Fire Opal and now there isn't any left. I, I really don't think I have that kind of impact on the craft market. Um, but uh, this one is really hard to find, but if you can, or find it in a kind of coppery color, this one's really nice, but all their glitter paints are really nice. Then I'm also gonna use my uh, usual metallic gold that I like so much, and I've made a little bit of my own cream. This is just made with a metallic, uh, sorry, a titanium white, and then I've added just a couple of drops of yellow ochre, and it's made a nice cream color, so I'm gonna use that one too. So I thought the first thing to do would be to draw out where I want my area to be for my dirty pour. So I'm just going to draw that out in gold so that it kind of um, gives me an area to work. So I think I want to make it about a third, a third, a third or something like that. So I'm just going to draw a couple of lines in black, uh, in gold. And I'm gonna let the gold dribble down over the edges too. So let me do a little dribble here and here. And over this side. So I don't need to end up necessarily with these gold lines here, but it just gives me something to pour within. And of course the paint's gonna spread out anyway. So I'm gonna make up a dirty pour cup and pour in the center part. So I've got a little bit of cream. I don't want to go too crazy with the cream because I do want it mostly to be the kind of rich and metallic colours. So let's see how we get on. And I want the colours to mix a little bit within my pour as well. So I'm going to add them from up on high so that they mix in the cup nicely. And I'll probably do, should we say, a couple of, a couple of layers of each. So that was the bronze. This one is the lovely copper color. A little bit of that one in there. Nice. And then this is the lovely fire opal. Ah, oh, fire opal. A little bit of that one in there. And if I drizzle that around, hopefully it'll give a little bit of that lovely um, glittery sparkle everywhere. Then a bit of gold, because you can never have too much gold in something. Although I think I may have got a bit metallics crazy, I don't know, what do you think? And then a little bit of black in there too. And again, I need to be a bit careful with the black, because the black obviously has a tendency to go crazy if you put too much in. So now I've got my first lot, I'm just going to go around and do exactly the same with the colours a second time. Doing them from on high so they mix well in the cup. More of the glitter, because we need it. We need glitter in our lives. Get a bit of that in there. Some more gold, and some more black. Okay. So let me clear all of my little pots and things away, and then we'll get on with our, with our pour. So now I have my dirty pour cup ready. 
I'm going to use just some plain black here. All of my paints today have been mixed around two parts paint to one part of the flow troll. Water then added as necessary to give them a creamy consistency. And then all of the colours had one or two drops of the treadmill belt lubricant. The only one that hasn't is this plain black. This is just the black, the flow troll and the water. I've not added any silicone to this one because I want this one to be my negative space. And it's also just a little bit thicker than I might usually use. So I'm just going to pour some of this on these outer areas and spread around with my palette knife. That's probably enough and see how we get on. So I've painted the um, canvas black already so that I don't need to worry too much about making it perfect. If there are any slightly thinner bits, it's already going to look good because there's um, black paint underneath too. I'm going to take it right up to the edge of that gold because I'm not planning on tipping my canvas um, too much. I want to just tip it from this way rather than from side to side. Is that a little lump? No, I think we're good. So one side is good. Let's do the other. I'm taking it right up to the edge of that gold. And then I think as I pour the other paints in, it'll probably spread a little bit anyway and um, cause the, the black and the gold to mix together on the edges, which would be nice. I think that would look nice. There we go, let's spread out for full coverage all the way. It looks nice and glossy. And that way it'll look nice and smooth and glossy in my photos too. Oh, I've already got a little bit of, oh, <laughs> yeah, I've messed up a little bit. Let's see, I've dipped my palette knife into the gold and just dragged it off a little bit there. Well, it looks nice though, so maybe I'll, I'll do a bit more of that later but first I want to make sure I get my dirty pour in the center and then we'll see what happens. Okay so I've got my dirty pour cut and because I like the lines of a dirty pour I'm actually going to emphasize that by pouring my paint backwards and forwards in stripes so that it gets more of a lined effect in the center here too. So let's see what happens. Well, I certainly have enough paint and I've got a little bit left in there if I need it. So far, that is looking beautiful, exactly what I like. So now I'm just gonna leave it a little moment because it's slightly spreading and it's gonna spread out and meet up with the gold here on the edges where there's a couple of spots. So I'm just gonna leave it for a second to spread and then I'm gonna tip. Okay, so I think it looks good. So now I, all I want to do is tip from, from um, this way. I don't want to tip that way so that I um, lose the kind of linear effect. So let's go up this way first of all. It's gonna go all the way over. Just encourage it a little bit on the corners there. That looks good. I've got a tiny bit there. I'm just gonna encourage the paints to meet. That's it. And a tiny bit here, I'm just going to encourage it to meet with the gold. And now, tip it the other way. So because my canvas is painted black on the ends here, I don't need to make sure that it's fully covered where the paint goes over. But I just want it to look kind of dribbly there and nice, but not fully covered. That looks perfect. I will show you that when I bring the camera down later so that you can see the effect that I've got on the ends where it's not fully covered, but hopefully looks good. So I have got lots of sparkle. I've got lots of metallics. I've got lots of cells, but they're small cells, which is good because I think it fits with the linear design um, and it fits with the general size and composition of the pore. So I'm happy. One thing I would say, it looks as though I've got a slightly 
wider black area here than here and that's my fault for not drawing my lines on so I'm going to tip slightly towards that black area and see if I can make it slightly go that way let's see I don't want to mess up Ooh. okay I think I'm going to call it a day I don't want to do it that's my own fault for not making it perfectly centered my new art is never supposed to be perfectly centered is it so I think it's good now what I do see let's get a piece of paper is I'm really liking the way where I made a mistake earlier and touched the gold that it's um, bled out into the black there so I'm going to try and do a little bit more just to balance that on this side with a very very light swipe just the slightest little bit the tip let's see how's it going okay that's good I'm liking it I might feel brave about doing a slight bit more Okay, that's good too. I need to balance that over this side with a little bit. All right, looks good. Okay, let's do a bit more. I'm liking it. Okay, let's do a bit more on this side. A wider piece. And then maybe another bit like that. And another piece. And another one. Okay, maybe a bit here. And a little bit more there. Now I like that. I think that has made it better than it was before. So that's good. I really hope that the gold isn't going to sink down into the black because I find that when I use metallics with black it looks really great now and when it dries the, the metallic seems to kind of separate down into the black and it loses these great shapes but I'm really hoping these are going to stay. So I'm happy. I'm very very happy. It's actually turned out how I imagined and things rarely do that these days. So let me bring you down and show you um, some of my favourite parts. So this is the end of the, the pour, just here, where you can see it kind of dribbling all the way over the edges. That's exactly the kind of look that I was looking for there. That looks really nice. And then here on the top, the way the gold is swiped out over the black, I'm really liking that. I am hoping, hoping so much that it's going to stay, but uh, suspecting that it will not, but we will see. Yeah, look, the longer it's stay in there the nicer it's looking and of course it looks very very gold for me against the black looks a little bit kind of washed out for you I think because the camera um, tries to take an average kind of reading and here's our center part so it's got lots of interest lots of stripes lots of colors it's going to look even better when it's dry because of course you'll see um, a lot more of the metallics which you don't see so much when it's wet and also there's lots of glitter Lots of glittery bits, which you may be able to see. You can see all the glittery parts just there. So this may soon become another of my favorite paintings. We will have to see. Um, sometimes I'm easily pleased, but with this one, it's turned out exactly as I was hoping. So I'm gonna dry it, varnish it, and show you what it looks like when it's finished. Well, here it is finished and it's awesome. I love this painting so much. I'm so in love. Um, I decided on this one to still use a gloss finish, but instead of using the polycrylic, which is very thick and glossy and kind of resin-like and gives a lot of shine off the surface, I went with um, a UV resistant um, clear gloss spray and it's not so glossy that you can um, still enjoy the the beautiful colors and things in the painting I find sometimes if I put the polycrylic over like a negative space black like this it's it bounces the light off a little bit too much um, gives too much glare whereas this one I think looks really good you can see the metallics in it and here on the edges um, looks really good where the, the gold is kind of bled out into the black. That didn't disappear, so I was happy. And of course you have all the metallics and the sparkly bits in this center here too. So it really does look excellent. And uh, I know I see it almost every time. Well, not almost every time, but this one certainly, um, I'm in two minds about whether to sell it because I really like it so much. 
Um, so we'll see. You may find it in my Etsy store. It may, may come with a, oh, I love this premium because it's such a nice painting. But I think anyone who sees this one is going to love it. So thank you very much for following along. I've really enjoyed making this painting. I hope you've enjoyed watching. And I want to see you here again very soon.